Okay, and it looks like we're live. So hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those new here, my name is Nikki. And at the end of every month, I do these wrap ups of everything I've been reading over the last few weeks. So um, we've got about 12, 13 books, I think, to get through today, which is quite a short month um, or a small amount for me for the month. Usually I'm more in the sort of 15 to 20 range, but I read a few longer works this month. So that uh, brought my score down a bit, if you like. So um, we'll kick straight off. Um, the first book I read was Corinne by Madame de Stael. Um, this is a classic. Um, I'm actually still trying to get through some of the books I received for birthday and Christmas uh, in December last year. And uh, this is one of them. I thought I'd better clear the last of them before the next batch arrived this year. So um, I haven't read anything um, by Jermaine de Stael before. So I gave this book four stars overall. And the premise of this is... Um, our, our sort of main character is a, a young lord who has um, gone over to Italy. Um, his father's just died, he's in a bit of a depression, and so for his health he's gone to the Mediterranean. And there he meets Corinne, who's an independent young woman, um, who's a, a recognised poet, and he gets drawn into her artistic circle and falls in love with her. However, um, it soon becomes a question of um, whether he's going to follow his passion or he's going to follow his father's um, last wishes that he marry a demure young English girl back home. And there's a little bit of a twist in the tale with Corinne's origins along the way as well. So as I said, four stars. Um, it was an enjoyable piece, um, typical for the period. And um, I recommend it if you also enjoy um, books that go into almost a bit of a tourist guide along the way. We get quite a lot of information on uh, Italy and Italian sites as we go as well. And Italian artworks. So if that sounds like your sort of thing, do check it out. Next I read I Am A Cat by Natsumi Soski. Um, so a very famous uh, Japanese classic uh, work from the turn of the 20th century. Um, this was a five-star read for me. It uh, The premise of this story is um, our narrator is a cat. He's a stray kitten who ends up um, being taken into a household and throughout the book he comments on the various foibles and goings-on of the humans around him. So it's kind of a commentary on Meiji era Japan as well. Um, the only thing I didn't like about this book was the slightly sad ending, um, which I hadn't seen coming. But otherwise, it's a really uh, interesting sort of satirical and acerbic um, view of Japan society or Japanese middle class society at the time. And another book I read from my Christmas haul last year is The Golden Maze by Richard Fiddler. So this is a nonfiction book that is um, talking about the history of Prague. Um, and I gave it four stars. Now, I've read another book on Prague history in the past. This one doesn't particularly have anything new to add, I have to say. And the thing that made it a four star read for me more than a five is it concentrated a lot on Soviet era. Um, it kind of zoomed through the rest of history and was just very heavy on 20th century. And I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of a balance um, between the different periods. But it's it's easy reading prose, so if you know nothing about Prague or you like Prague but want to know a bit more about the history, then it's definitely worth checking out. Um, moving on, I'm actually going to review this book. I haven't 100% finished it yet, but it's going to be something I just keep dipping back and forth into, so eventually I'm going to just put a review up. And that is uh, Korean Stories for Language Learners by Damron and Yo. So this is a five-star read for me. This is a book I bought for myself. Now, I've been studying Korean for a bit over a year and a half. Uh, initially, I was just teaching myself, and now I'm also taking classes through the Korean Cultural Centre here in Australia, which is linked to the King Sejong Institute. So um, my Korean is at a sort of upper beginner level, I'd say now, maybe just pushing towards intermediate, but um, probably still still in that upper beginner for now. And that's about where this book is aimed. It's I would say you need to be able to read Hangul before you start looking at this book and just having a little bit of knowledge of some basic Korean grammar would help. However, the stories work um, in a progression, so they're very simple with a few sort of hello, my name is phrases before we start to move into some simple stories, just, you know, short one to two paragraphs, gradually getting longer and more complex as you work through the book. Um, I really liked that approach because it kind of introduces phrases like, you know, once upon a time, and it goes through it in detail. The first 
time you see it, but then it just assumes the knowledge as you go on. So it's a, a very gradual progression, which I think works well for language learners. And it's a bilingual piece. So you have the Korean on one page, the English on the other, and then some notes on key vocab and also some cultural notes about the stories as well, which is an added interest. And the stories themselves are all drawn from um, Korean folk tales. So um, it's a great book, even if you're not learning Korean, it's a nice collection of Korean folk stories and you get the English translation too. But for Korean learners, definitely if you're at a sort of um, mid to upper beginner level, then it's worth having a look. Uh, moving along, da -da 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 -da. so um, I've got a few arcs and net galley reads next. So the first two are arcs I received from Pam Macmillan, Australia. The first of these is The Cat Who Saved Books by uh, Natsukawa Sosuke. So this is a four and a half star read for me. Uh, it's a story that's kind of um, magical realism fantasy of a young boy whose um, grandfather owned a bookstore. But upon his grandfather's death, he's going to leave with an aunt he's only just met. He has to close everything up. But then this cat, talking cat, suddenly appears and says he needs his help to um, deal with these sort of challenges. And he has to save some books in this fantasy realm. Um, I don't want to say too much more on spoiler it, but it, it was an enjoyable, sweet tale. It had a nice little message uh, hidden in there as well. And, you know, it's, it's one of those classic Japanese cat stories. So if you like Japanese cat stories with a bit of a fantasy and a little bit of a message along the way, do check out The Cat Who Saved Books. I'm sorry, I'm sniffing away here because naturally all morning my nose has been fine and as soon as I start filming my nose starts running. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, the next book I read was non-fiction. Um, again, as I said, this was from Pam Macmillan Australia as an arc. And it's Innovation, The History of England, Volume 6 by Peter Ackroyd. So this is the final volume in the six book series um, of the History of England. And I gave it four and a half stars. Look, um, if you've heard some of my other reviews, you'll know I've really enjoyed this series. I like Peter Ackroyd's writing style a lot. Uh, he did the awesome London biography some years ago. And this has been a really good series. The only reason it doesn't get five for me is because for me personally, we're into the 20th century now. So a lot of this is within my living memory or it's recent enough that I know a fair bit about it. So from that point of view, it was maybe there was a lot of politics as well in this book of Labour versus Tory and things. And it just doesn't have the dynamic excitement of medieval battles between kings, you know, um, so that's the only reason it didn't get five stars for me, just because this bit of history just didn't interest me quite as much. But I do recommend the series. Um, it's a really great series of books, um, really well written and very engaging, um, not stodgy, um, fact based, but really good uh, storytelling style of history. Uh, next up, I watched a net galley, uh, watched a net galley book. I'm just getting confused with Netflix for a second there. I read a net galley book. Um, called Awakened by um, Kiara Duggan. Now this was a three star read for me. Um, the basic story, the idea appealed to me when I saw the blurb and it's it's a kind of typical teen paranormal fantasy story. A, a girl that suddenly discovers she has powers and awakens this uh, sleeping guy um, and launches a, a sort of fantasy war if you like. However, it just felt, it felt a little bit childish, um, I guess is maybe the way I should describe the style. And it, I think what I mentioned actually in my text review of this book, and it's, this is one I read way back a few weeks ago, so it feels like ages ago to me, but I think I mentioned The Vampire Diaries. And as a youth, as a te early teen, I think I read The Vampire Diaries when I was about 11 or 12, something like that. And I loved them. But then I went back to the books as an adult and reread them around the time the series was on and things. And I was really disappointed because I was like, oh, the writing's not that great. And I don't know why I love these books so much because it's just like cringeworthy, some of it. And it, it was kind of that feeling that I got from this book as well. It was all very tropey and stayed and you knew what was going to happen way before it happened. There was kind of a lot of insta love going on with the two main characters. And so, you know, it had a good plot idea and 
it will appeal to readers, but I think it will appeal to young teens around the sort of 11, 12 years old. It's not one that I think translates well for an adult market, unlike some YAs, which can be easily read, whether you're a teen or an adult. So if you're a teen, a young teen, probably a young teen girl, go ahead, you'll probably love it. But if you're an adult who enjoys reading YA, this is probably not one that's for you. Uh, the next book I read was an ARC I received from Harlequin, Australia, and it is Midnight in Everwood by M.A. Kuzmia. Um, now, this is a, a sort of adult retelling of The Nutcracker. So if you're familiar with the, the story or the ballet, um, it's based on that. Um, it takes it takes the story and does its own thing with it. And, and you're definitely, if you know The Nutcracker story, you'll recognise all the elements. But there are some um, some twists and turns and things they change along the way. Um, this was a four and a half star read for me. Um, overall, I thought it worked really well. I liked the main character. I thought the adaptation of the storyline was good. The only thing that didn't quite work for me to give it five stars was the villain who was a little bit two dimensional and just sort of disappeared from the tale for a big bulk of the time as well, only to suddenly reappear at the end to be defeated. So um, that element for me just was a little bit lacking but otherwise it was really enjoyable and if you like the Nutcracker it's definitely worth checking out. Uh, going back to NetGalley, um, in fact no before we do that I'll just mention the one non-NetGalley one uh, which was one I bought which was volume 30 of Black Butler by Tabasa Yama. Um, obviously uh, five stars for me you know I love this series I've been waiting for what feels like forever for volume 30 and now I shall probably have to wait for what feels like forever for volume 31 but um yeah, it was great to get a bit of backstory on some of the secondary characters again in this volume, so very enjoyable. And finally, I'll end with five um, NetGalley reads. Um, no, I lie, four. I only got four to go. Four NetGalley reads. The first of those was I Would Prefer Not To by Herman Melville. So this is a collection of short stories by Herman Melville. All I'd read of Melville before was Moby Dick, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, but I wanted to give him another chance and try some of his short stories. And actually, this was a four star read for me. It was a really interesting collection of tales, in particular, the title piece, I would prefer not to. Um, it's a really, really fun and intriguing story about uh, the guy takes a new worker on. But whenever he asks him to do work, his response is, I would prefer not to. Um, and it was it was great. It was just really amusing and entertaining and yet had a sort of deeper aspect as well. And the other stories in the collection I also enjoyed. So if you maybe have read Moby Dick and either love it, definitely read this collection. Or if, like me, you've maybe read Moby Dick, but you're a bit, yeah, could take it or leave it, then uh, it's worth checking out this collection just to see a different side of this author's style. And the next one I read was Plague Birds by Jason Sanford. And this is a sort of sci-fi fantasy piece. And I gave it four stars. Um, I thought the premise was really entertaining. It worked super well. I was intrigued uh, by the story. And when it first started, I was absolutely gripped by the characters and what was going on and the world building that was very nicely handled um, with information fed to us gradually as the story progressed. However, I, I didn't kind of feel captivated by the latter part of the story, which is why I only got five, four stars for me and not five. But definitely, um, as something different and fresh and an interesting idea, um, Plague Bergs is worth reading. Um, the Plague Bergs, perhaps, I, I don't want to give too much of the story away, but I can say that the Plague Birds are people who are bonded with a, an AI, and their job is to go around and um, assess guilt, um, basically judge people. So they travel around, and if someone's done something wrong, the Plague Bird will judge them and exact necessary vengeance, whether that's death or some kind of... Um, dismemberment of some sort or uh, depending on the severity of the case and um, one of our main character our main female character ends up becoming a plague bird a, I can't even speak now plague bird and um, gets caught up in this sort of greater uh, mystery that's going on because plague birds are being attacked by this strange force who shouldn't have the skill to attack and kill them but does so I can't really say more than that but uh, that's the premise of the story and as I said it was a really great and fresh idea even if I didn't love uh, the way the story developed towards the end. Next up I read um, A Study in Spandex by Hal Bodner. So this is a 
um, follow up to uh, Fabulous in Tights, which was the first book. So this is a uh, gay romance fantasy superhero story. Um, this got four stars for me as well. This book is a lot darker than the first story. So it picks up where book one left off. And I mean, it's very realistic in many ways because our character is dealing with um, the loss of someone dear to him from book one. And so it's, it's a very dark emotional story in that respect. And this one also features a, a lot of um, torture and kidnapping kind of storyline um, with some quite violent torture going on. So if that's not your sort of thing, um, you'll need to avoid this. But um, it was definitely a very, there was still a little bit of humour, but it was a much darker piece overall than the first book in the series. Um, however, there were some great new side characters introduced who I really loved. And I'm interested to see how the story will now develop in a third book. Um, I'm quite keen to see which way the author is going to take things, having been so dark in this one. And that brings us to the last book for the month, which was Present Tense Machine by Gunhild Oyehaug. And this is a book I gave three and a half stars to. The premise of this story is um, a mother is watching her daughter play on the bike in the yard one day and reading a book. And as she reads one of the words she mispronounces it and in that moment a parallel universe opens up and in this world her daughter disappears and is no longer even remembered that she was there and so there's two parallel worlds going on and we kind of move in between them throughout the story i really love the premise the idea that language could you know one mispronounced word could bring about a parallel universe and I've probably brought about several in this video as I've um, fumbled over words as well. So um, there you go. But overall, I just never invested in the characters, I think is the problem. We were kept at this kind of remoteness from them. And I wondered in, if, in some ways if that's intentional because the characters themselves, both of them in their parallel worlds, the, the mother and the daughter, feel this disconnect and like something's wrong somewhere in in their world but they don't know what it is um the fact that each other is missing in each of them is is the issue but they don't realize that but they just know something's not right and i wondered if we were kept distant from the characters to feel that same sense of disquiet but for me that just didn't quite work because i never really engaged with them or cared about them enough to really be invested in the story um so it was an intriguing premise, and if you're looking for something completely different with a sort of interesting new idea, then it's worth checking out. But I just felt that the way the, the prose worked, it was very dense, wordy prose, which again, perhaps was intentional because the story is so much invested in the idea of language and the power of language. But I never really got caught up in the story that I could turn my brain off and just enjoy what was happening, if you see what I mean. So that brings us to the end. My voice is going and my nose is running now. So it's quite good that we've uh, reached the end at this point. Um, as I did announce in my um, TV and film wrap up vlog just a minute ago though, I will just say here too that I am considering stopping the series of vlogs at the end of the year. I have filmed these at the end of every month and I don't get, well, if I'm lucky if I get one or two watches, sometimes it's zero and generally it's under five. So it's a lot of effort for me to go to to film these if no one's interested in watching them. So I'm thinking that unless I suddenly get a huge viewer uptake in the next few months, I'm going to stop these. And I, obviously I still share all my book reviews on my blog, so, um, on my blog, sorry, so you can find them there. I share them on Twitter and I share them on Instagram. So I'll still be doing the book reviews and with the TV and film, I'm considering also sharing those on one or more of those medium as well. But I am considering stopping doing these these vlogs. So I will still be on YouTube next year, but I'm definitely scaling back my YouTube content in 2022. And I will give a more sort of detailed announcement about that at the end of December. But just to give you the heads up that there's potentially only going to be three more months of these book and film wrap up vlogs. So I will end there. I will be back in October with um, a few of my pre-scheduled vlogs, my uh, language learning vlog that I will be coming in the middle of the month as a live stream and of course again at the end of the month with these wrap-ups. So I will see you all again very soon. Bye for now everyone.